where does that leave us for tabular integration? So tabular integration is a structure and a method for solving problems that use integration by parts. However, it does have some positives and negatives as it's kind of a technique. The pros of this technique are it's really easy to set up multiple rounds of integration by parts. The table structure is great for that kind of thing. You know exactly how to set it up and how to work out that table into a answer to the problem. It's also phenomenal when you are differentiating a polynomial as a part of this problem. It's also really easy to read the answer off the table once you get this process set up. Because sometimes for these long problems, it's hard to keep track of what you were adding and where things went as you go step by step by step down this process. Now, on the other hand, what's not so good? Well, there is some setup time involved for this process. You have to build the table in the first place. It's also not really that good outside of its one use for differentiating polynomials. So if the process is not able to differentiate the polynomial, it's probably not the best method to use. And lastly, it kind of masks the process of what's going on integration by parts. In the sense that if you get really used to using this method for solving problems, you might fall into the sort of trap of it's the only way to solve these problems. And you don't really know the formula or how it actually works outside of just the table. And it makes it harder to adjust when problems can't really work with the table or don't really work exactly the way the table is structured. It's harder to then adapt to be able to actually solve those problems if you're solely in the mindset of, I have to build this table and do it this way like the examples I showed in the previous video. But really they do both work. They're both the same method, the same technique, just structured in slightly different ways to better show how it works. But what I recommend here, so for using tablet integration, my recommendations are to use this in two cases. If you are differentiating a polynomial, go for it, this is great. And if you need at least two steps of integration by parts. In my experience, two steps is around the break-even point in the sense that the time investment to build and set up the table is worth it if you're doing at least two steps but if you're doing two or less it's less time to do the actual integration of the formula directly so two take your pick if you want to do it or not if it's only one step i would recommend just doing it by the normal formula because that's going to be quicker then going through building this table, doing all this stuff. If you just do it one step, you're one step and done. It's a quicker result than building the table. And if you have three or more steps, build the table. It is worth the slight investment to make that happen to then write out the answer a lot quicker at the end. On the other hand, if you don't have a polynomial that you're differentiating, I would highly recommend to just use normal integration by parts. So in this case, it's gonna be a lot more beneficial to you for this process to see that last remaining integral at every step to know when to do something with it to actually solve the problem. Right? In the case of the circular part, you would see when it matches the everything you started with to move it over. And for the log problem one, you would see that you had a case of cancellation of terms to actually be able to solve out the integral. So for these applications, when, you're, when there is not a polynomial differentiated, you kind of want to see what that last integral looks like at every step so you know what to do with the problem. This comes about a lot with things like the circular problems, with integrals of log, integrals of arc tangent. All of these problems that use integration by parts don't really fit well into the tabular integration formulation because they don't have differentiation polynomials. So I would say keep both ideas in your mind. Know how to do the tabular bit for when you see a polynomial that you're going to send to degree zero and disappear and use it there. But if you see a product of functions that doesn't have one of these terms that you're going to differentiate away to zero, you're likely better off using integration by parts directly via the actual formula to get yourself to a final answer that way. So there are my recommendations for doing tabular integration. Keep these two ideas both in your head for these problems. Yes, that might seem like it's two things, but they really are the same process. Just using tabular can be a shortcut way for doing repeated integration by parts with polynomials, whereas you're better off having the actual formula in your head for all of your applications because seeing that last one is going to be important to know how to solve this. I hope these have been helpful in understanding what this process is and how to do it. 